Hey folks, welcome to today's lesson looking at the area enclosed by the x-axis. Starting to get towards the common HSC styles of questions. Probably the easier um, side of it, but certainly getting more towards what they'll be asking. Um, Alright, so we've looked at the definite integrals so far, um, which allows us to find the area underneath a curve. Um, and certainly it, it gives us the sign, what we call the signed area underneath the curve. Um, when the area is given by the formula, the derivative of um, f of x, which is our graph dx between the uh, the bound region of b and a, or your two x values, um, when it's the x-axis, I guess. Um, when f x is is negative, um, the area signed area is also negative, and it comes out. We've seen it before when we looked at the uh, that whole issue of the um, cubic graph. You know, if I was looking for the area between zero and let's say four, okay, the area is going to be positive, all right. But sometimes, if we look at let's say between zero and negative four, what you're going to find is the area will come out as a negative amount, all right. We, we simply take the the absolute value of that uh, of that measurement. Um, but it certainly is a more challenging question and where we would actually split up that area as one question, that area is the other question, then add them together. Um, so certainly, uh, you know, I think the number one important thing is always sketch, okay, when you can. I think it's going to really help you. I've already said that in many uh, examples previously to this. So let's start with a question. Find the area enclosed by the curve y is equal to 2 plus x minus x squared. So we're going to sketch this briefly and have a look at exactly what this is going to look like. It doesn't have to be exact, but we want to get pretty close. Now, in that format, you know, that doesn't make too much sense to me, so I'm going to rearrange it. Minus x squared plus x um, plus 2. I'm going to take the negative out of it because I don't like dealing with negatives when I'm looking at my uh, quadratics. Um, and then if I factorize that, it will be 2 and 1, so x minus 2, x plus 1. Okay, so what that gives me is 1 and 2, and then it gives me a negative 1. So from that graph, you can see x equals 2, x equals negative 1, which gives me my points where it's crossing. Um, <clears throat> notice that this is a, uh, a negative graph. It's negative x squared, uh, negative x squared there. So we know it's going to be going through there. It goes through 2. And there we have it. Okay, look, very rough sketch. You don't really need to have it too exact. But what this enables me to do, enables me to see what I'm finding the area of. So I'm looking for the area enclosed by the curve, which you can see in the yellow, and the x-axis. So if I do this in, let's say, green, it's looking for all of this area here. Okay. So what it's actually asked me to do, theoretically, is if I do the integral of 2 and negative 1, okay, and I do um, 2 plus x minus x squared dx, we can simply find it that way. Um, it's going to be all above the x-axis, so it's all going to be positive, so there's no need to split things up. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate, as it's going to be a definite function, okay, if I do that we get um, 2x plus x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 and then 2 and negative 1. All right. There's no real need to simplify there. Um, it's just going to be a substitution question. Um, and so I'm going to be putting in here um, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2 minus 2 cubed is 8. 8 divided by 3, well it's not going to be very nice, so I'm going to put it as 8 over 3, minus brackets, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus negative 1 squared is 1 over 2, minus negative 1 cubed is negative 1, 
so it becomes a positive 1 over 3. Now, what I would generally do is in an exam, you might actually just you know show through substitution. That means 2 brackets 2 plus 2 squared over 2, etc. Or you just put in the 2 where the x's are, the negative 1 where the x's are, and then simply put it into your calculator. Uh, if you do that, though, the answer should be 4.5, and it should be 4.5 units squared because you've just found area. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, sounds quite challenging, but actually it's not. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward once you do a few of them. Okay, find the area bounded by the curve y equals x squared minus 4 and the x-axis. So again, I'm just going to do a quick rough sketch to see what it's going to look like. It's a little bit easy, this one. So y equals x minus 2 x plus 2, um, it's a difference of 2 squares, x equals plus a negative 2. So I can see it's going to cut through negative 2, it's going to cut through 2, it's a positive graph, it goes down to negative 4. Okay, and so I can at least sketch my parabola as best as I can. Alright, so it's asking for the area beneath the curve um, and the x-axis. So in this case, what the area they're looking for is this area inside here, okay, between the curve and the x-axis, all right? Um, so what it's asking me to do, for the integral between 2 and negative 2 of x squared minus 4 dx. Okay, just like we did before. So we're just splitting it up into our own little integral and then we're integrating. So if I integrate this, remember it's definite because I've got 2 and negative 2 there. So it's x to the power of 3 over 3 minus 4x with the region of 2 and minus 2. Um, now we can substitute into it. Um, 2 cubed is 8 over 3 minus 4 times 2 is 8. Put those in my little brackets minus, I always put the brackets in there because when you have negatives going in it can stuff things up. So it's negative 2 cubed is negative 8 over 3. Um, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. And then simply put that into your calculator and you should come up with negative 10 and 2 thirds. Now remember this just means that the area is underneath the x-axis so we take the absolute value of that to get 10 and two-thirds units squared. Okay, so it just means you've got a negative value. That doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's just take the absolute value. What does matter is if half of it is positive and half it's negative, then that's a bit of an issue, which uh, you probably know it's coming up in the next question. So the next question, to find the area between the curve y equals x cubed, um, the x-axis, and the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. So again, I'm going to do a nice little sketch here. Um, not particularly neat there. Apologies. Um, okay, so line x equals negative 1, or negative 1 will be here. Okay. And then 3 will be somewhere like over here. Let's say that's 1, 2, 3. So there my upper and lower bounds. So what it's asking me to do, and I'll do this in, we'll go red, it's asking me for the area between the curve and the x-axis. Alright, now we've seen one of these questions in a previous lesson, um, but this one's a bit more challenging because it's not just reflected. Okay, you can see that these areas are not going to be the same. If it was 3 and negative 3, then the areas would be the same both left and right hand sides. What you could do is find the area of 1 and then just double it. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out for us. So this is what I'm going to do because, again, if I find the area between the whole lot, you know, some of it's going to be negative, some of it's going to be positive. So that area there, I want to find individually and find the absolute value of it, and I want to find it, the area there. By itself. So we're going to find this in two steps, in two stages. So I'm going to look for the integral between 3 and 0. Okay, and I'm going to use the, the graph x cubed dx. I'll then add that to the absolute value of the integral between 0 and negative 1 x cubed dx. 
So hopefully you can see what I'm doing there because what the first part's going to give me um, straight the area underneath that right hand side of the y axis, I guess. And then I'm going to add it on to that value there. But remember, because it's below the x axis, it's going to come up with a negative value. So that's why I want to have the absolute value of it. So let's go ahead and do this. All right. So I'm going to now integrate. So it'll be x to the power of 4 over 4. We 3 and 0 plus and it'll be x to the power of 4 over 4 0 and negative 1 remembering that that will be the absolute value of okay so let's now chuck that in um, we get 3 to the power of 4 which is 81 over 4 minus 0 to the power of 4 divided by 4 well it's just going to be 0 all right. Plus now zero to the power of four over four is zero minus chuck in negative one is going to be one over four. But remember that will be the absolute value of it, which will give me I'm running out of room here. 81 over 4. Now you can see why the absolute value is important because if I didn't have the absolute value, I'd be taking away a quarter. We don't want to do that. Okay, we want to add it on. So we're adding on that quarter. Okay, which gives us 82 over 4, which is going to give us 20.5 units squared. So just to recap that last example because that's the really hard type of question where you need to draw this out. You really do because then you can see that you're going to have to separate it okay, into two sections because if you don't you're going to get a smaller area. You get 80 over 4, you know, not 82 over 4 because you need to add these two areas on. Again what I just do is just find the area of the right hand side, just find the area of the left hand side. They both could be positive values, so just add them together and then off you go. Alright. Look, I hope that made a bit of sense. That last question that is tough. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you there. It can get a little bit tricky there. Um, but certainly I want you to go through those questions. You know, look as I said before, if you notice that the left hand and right hand side are the same size, then just find the area of one and then double it. But if you are not sure, just split it up into two different values. Okay, um, it certainly is a more challenging question, but I want you to have a go at it. Um, I think this is exercise 3.6 on the Red Book for those of you in my Year 12 class, um, page 106. So get a start on that stuff there. I'll get some solutions to you, but this is really starting to get into the HSC style of questions. Unfortunately, they're not as straightforward as that. They do get more challenging, um, but that's the general gist of the main tested type of questions, I guess. Anyway, I hope that made a bit of sense to you. Um, if not, let me know, and, uh, and I'll meet up with you in class.